Welcome to the newest episode of Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. I'm your host, Jason Fraley, picking the brains of the top filmmakers, musicians, and artists of our time. Leanne Rimes performs live tonight at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia. I spoke with Rimes when she performed with the NSO Pops at the Kennedy Center back in 2017. Leanne, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. The NSO has done um, some of these cool shows. It's a new thing they've been doing, and I mean, it's ranged all genres. They had Boys to Men recently. Uh, they've done Kendrick Lamar, Nas, and now we're going a little country with this. I, I love the idea. Um, tell me how cool it's going to be to you know be up there with this orchestra behind you. Uh, it's got to be epic. It is epic. I can think that's actually a great word for it. Um, I I play I've played with the symphony many times, but I don't I don't get to do it as often as I would like. Um, I've done symphony tours where we do like a couple weeks, but. Um, it is, it's such an epic experience, um, you know, because there's so much. It just takes it, it takes an, and adds another, you know, level of, um, of excitement and beauty and, you know, just emotion to the performance. So, you know, once you have that experience, it's, uh, it's something that you, you want more often. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for me it is. And so it's, you know, it'll be a beautiful night. It's always just, I get really moved by it. Um, so I think that just translates over, and, you know, to the audience and the performance and everything. How does it work re- rehearsal wise? Do you? I mean, obviously, you said you've done it with orchestras before, but yeah. are you? Do you meet with the conductor? You know, ahead of time, or you wait till you get to DC, or how does that work? No, we, I usually I'll go in probably half, for about half an hour um, because I we play about half of the show with symphony and half without. Okay. Um, so I have a band leader that goes in and that he talks to them beforehand. We have charts that have been written out long ago um, that uh, that the symphony has beforehand too, and so they'll go in. Or he'll go in. Um, a few hours before me and on the day of show and run the whole thing with the symphony and make sure all of that is in place and then I'll come in and run what I need to run and then we're good to go. <laughs> uh, awesome. What, yeah. what, what can we expect here? Is it any of your newer stuff, a little of the hits, a little of both? You, you hear a little bit of everything. Um, my, my show, you know, I used to go by a set list, like strictly by a set list, and with the symphony it's a little more um, defined, but right. <laughs> it still changes from night to night. Uh, you know, no, I don't think we've done a show that's actually been the same this year, which has been great. Um, I uh, I love to kind of mix it up. So yeah, we play we play the hits. I play some new stuff. Um, I uh, some of the hits actually. You know, I've been singing these songs for some of them for like twenty years <laughs> since you were age so, eleven. <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, you know, so some of them we've kind of played around with this year and changed the arrangement of a few songs, and um, it, they're really beautiful. I'm I'm moved um, and really you know. I connect with these songs, I think, deeper now than with the, the arrangement changes than I have in a long time. So uh, if you've been to a show before, you'll hear something, you'll hear the songs, you know, that you know, but you'll they'll be a little bit different. And I think, you know, people that, that we've played them for have really been falling in love with them. So it's a it's a really fun show this year. Awesome. Um, let's let's move a little chronologically through them a little, if if, if you don't mind. Um, I, I I mean I remember. I mean I was a little. Kid, I was probably about your age when it happened. But I remember when you first came out around uh, around when you were age eleven, and everyone was blown away by by blue the the way you moved your voice up and down. Um, it was amazing. Uh, take me back to that sort of whirlwind experience of, of bursting on the scene. Oh God, I don't even. I don't think I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so young. I really was. No, I, I signed my deal when I was eleven, and blue came out. Um, I was thirteen when blue came out, and uh, I it, we just celebrated actually the twentieth twentieth anniversary. You know, it it happened so fast. I mean, we went from zero to sixty in like not even in a millisecond. It was insane. Um, and so it was, you know, as, as a kid, I don't think anybody can tell you, no one can tell an adult how to deal with that, <laughs> <laughs> much less a kid. Um, but it was, I mean, it was everything that I could have dreamed, dreamt of at the time, you know, and um, and everything else that I had, you know, no idea that was coming. And, um, yeah, it's been quite the ride, quite the 20 years, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people have compared it to, you know, I remember Tanya Tucker when she burst on the scene with Delta Dawn. That was, uh, you know, she was really young, too. But you're that sort of idea, but in the 90s. Um, what do you think? I mean, that song's probably going to go down as one of the greatest ever. In, I and mean, it's probably I think it's been voted as such as well by some uh, some of the lists. Why do you think that connects so well? I don't know. I think it was a, a multitude of different things, you know, that kind of came together to make that. And, you know, I think being me being so young and my voice and the fact that I did this yodel thing that was different than <laughs> what people were hearing at the time, um, you know, also 90s country at that time was kind of, this was really traditional um, for where the genre was at the time. Right. Um, you know, it reminded people of Patsy Cline and, you know, so many different things that 
just kind of came together with that song to make it so special. Um, you know, I, so I, I, and I honestly, I still, I love singing that song. I, I, I don't get tired of singing. I think I have just such a great appreciation for right. it, you know, where it took me to. So, um, yeah, it is, it is one of the greatest, I have to say. It's, it's just something magic about that. How did you learn to sing like that? Did, were you, you had to have just been born with that. Yeah, I, um, I think it was a, it's, it's a gift. Um, you know, I, I really, I never took voice lessons. I just, I grew up, my dad has tapes of me singing when I was like 18 months old. <laughs> I like full on could sing. You couldn't understand a word I was saying when I was speaking, but when I was singing, it was like, I had this otherworldly thing come out of me. <laughs> it was Baby Blue was your first Baby song. Blue, yes. <laughs> And now, now you're royal blue. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Well, I mean, right after that, I mean, you had a, a you you rattled off a couple. I, I loved your un, unchained melody too. But I mean, the, the next big hit was was how do I live? I know. Right. Um, with Trisha Trisha Yearwood had a version of that too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, personally, I, I think yours just just took it and knocked it uh, out of the park. Saying, like, cause I'm on the phone with you. Yeah, if I if I was interviewing Trisha, and, you know, and Garth was standing there staring at me, I'd probably right. say the other. <laughs> <laughs> Did hers come out first or yours? Um, that's gosh, that's such a funny story. Um, I actually recorded that song uh, for the for the soundtrack for Oh my God, what's the name of the movie? Con Air. Thank you. Oh wow, um, Con Air. Yeah, I recorded it for the for the soundtrack, and then there was a bunch of basically I'm not gonna bore you with the whole story, but there was a bunch of um, <laughs> just kind of polit- politics and craziness and BS, <laughs> 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 and um, mine ended up not going in the film and. Um, Diane Warren, who wrote the song, had actually said, you know, this is your song, whether or not it went in the film or not, and yeah. um, minded them not going in film, and they had Trisha record it, and hers went in the film, and hers was released, hers was released both at the, basically at the same time, um, and it was, it was kind of this, like I said, it had nothing, it had nothing to do with Trisha and me, absolutely, I love her to death, it had everything to do with this crazy business, and we both had hits with it, and so it is, and who cares now? <laughs> it's such a powerful so, song, though. I mean, why do you think people love it so much? I well, oh my God, that's like you know, it's the most beautiful, heartbreaking power ballad, you know. So I, I think people just, I think instantly related to, you know, they could play that, they could play that anything, they could play that at a wedding, they could play that at a funeral, they could play God, you know, it just related to people's lives in such a way that was really powerful. Yeah, definitely. Um, we don't have to go through all of them because I know we're up against the clock. But I'll, you know, can't find the moonlight. I mean, yeah. nothing but love makes. I mean, there's so many. But I guess uh, one more we'll go into. I need you. That one. That one just is like a goosebump one. Uh, uh, thanks. Why? Why do you think uh, that one caught on so fast? Well, that I mean, was kind of. Um, that was actually attached for me to uh, to this. Uh, it was a film, a Jesus miniseries um, that was going on at the time, and um, that song. I, I think were people related to in so many different ways, whether if it was a love song or if it was from, you know, a spiritual point of view. Um, it really connected with people on so many different levels. I mean, I think that's what the greatest songs do. I mean, it's, they tell so many different stories. Um, you know, people can relate stories of their lives, you know, their specific story to it. And so it um, it becomes this kind of uh, very kind of worldwide perspective. Um, it doesn't, it's not so specific to one specific story, but people really can find themselves in their, their, uh, their stories within it. So. Yeah. Um, what, are, what are you listening to these days? What's on Leanne Rimes' uh, playlist, country or otherwise? Um, <laughs> I don't even, gosh, I don't even know what I'm listening to these days. Um, <laughs> I listen to everything. I really do. Um, hold on. I have to look here to see what I'm listening to. There you go. Pull up the iPod right now. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I'm, a, I'm listening to a lot of Jack White lately. I'm listening, I love the new Beyonce record. You said Jack White? Yeah, I love right. Jack White. You're an icky thump. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Mumford and Sons. What else am I listening to? Cool. Well, take, I mean, you mentioned uh, just piggybacking off that. I won't make it go through your whole yeah. iPod. <laughs> I'll, you. I'll spare you. Um, what um, you mentioned, sort of a you know how how back then when you first came on the scene, country was sort of in a more traditional place, and now everybody's gone country, as Alan Jackson said. Um, yeah. You know, what, what's your sort of take on how it's evolved over the last, I guess, twenty years since you since you really came um, on? I mean, I think I think it's great that it's definitely become more of a mainstream, you know, kind of vibe, and and people are it's getting into so many, you know so many different countries and different hands and um you know it it i'm i do personally miss the old school country music I me mean, too I, I miss i miss that that's what i grew up on and i love it so much and it's nice to hear people kind of dabble in that every once in a while um but uh you know that that will always be my favorite but i, I do think that it's it's nice that 
you know, it's being more accepted, I think, worldwide these days, and, and people are, country music is kind of, you know, really, like I said, become kind of a worldwide thing, which is great. Yeah. Who were some of those old school ones, you know, that predated you that maybe your parents or grandparents listened to? Oh, God, I listened to every, you know, Hank Williams and um, Merle Haggard and uh, Patsy Cline and Dolly Parton and... Um, Who did you sing in the mirror, in the bathroom mirror, when you were singing growing up and singing into the comb? What did you sing? Oh, <laughs> everybody. I mean, <laughs> I grew up, you know, listening to Patsy Cline and Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland and Whitney Houston and Reba and, I mean, Janis Joplin. It was really, like, it was so across the board for me. And now a whole new generation of uh, young girls and, and guys grew up uh, singing your stuff, so yeah. we... Yeah, we. Cool. It's really awesome. Well, you're. I think you're one of the legends. So thanks so much for taking the time. Um, we can't la- wait to see you at a, at a, at Kennedy Center. It's gonna yeah, be awesome. Come out. It's gonna be a beautiful show. Emil Deku will be conducting you. We we've interviewed him a ton, so he's great. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So uh, everybody, it's uh, Leanne Rhymes with the NSO Pops. Get your tickets now. It's gonna be awesome. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us on Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. Remember to hit the subscribe button and give us a five-star rating if you like what you hear. We'll see you next time. I wanted to take a second to tell you about an app I really enjoy. Living in the D.C. area is great, and Podcast D.C. gathers all of the local shows that I like all in one local app. Health, sports, local news, politics, and so much more. Podcast D.C. is the new local app with hundreds of D.C. area podcasts to choose from. I can earn exciting rewards just for listening and share the podcasts I love instantly. Available in the App Store or in Google Play, listen local with Podcast D.C.